It was a brutal winter day, the kind where the cold seeps through your bones and the wind howls like a relentless beast. I was hunched over a wooden frame in a half-finished house, my breath visible in the frigid air, when a shiver racked my body. Not from the cold, but from something deeper, something unsettling. My head pounded with a relentless throb, and my muscles ached with an unfamiliar heaviness. Every swing of the hammer felt like lifting lead, every cut of the saw, a battle against my own failing strength. As I wiped the sweat from my brow, I realized it wasn't just exhaustion, it was something worse. My vision blurred, and my hands trembled uncontrollably. I knew I couldn't continue, not with this relentless pressure building inside me, a storm that seemed to match the chaos outside. I forced myself to pack up and staggered to my truck, the cold air biting at my skin as if trying to drive me away. The drive home was a haze of feverish heat and shivering chills, my mind racing with worry and a growing sense of dread. Little did I know, this forced retreat from the harsh elements would lead me to a discovery that would shatter my world. Ron Harding was a man of simple, steadfast principles, shaped by years of labor and loyalty. He was a carpenter by trade, his hands seasoned by countless hours of meticulous work, shaping wood into structures that stood firm against the ravages of time. In his mid-forties, Ron had built more than just houses. He'd constructed a life rooted in dedication and hard work. His family was his cornerstone. Nell, his wife of twenty years, with whom he shared a modest but comfortable home, and their two children, Jake and Emily, who were the apples of his eye. Life in their small town had always followed a predictable rhythm. Ron's days filled with the clang of tools and the satisfaction of a job well done, an evening spent around the dinner table, where laughter and stories flowed as freely as the food. Despite the unremarkable monotony, there was a quiet pride in Ron's routine, a sense of accomplishment that came from knowing he was providing for his family and creating a secure future. But behind the facade of this seemingly stable life lay an undercurrent of tension and uncertainty, shadows that Ron himself had not fully acknowledged. The moment Ron staggered through the front door, the warmth of his home was a sharp contrast to the biting cold outside, but it did little to ease his growing unease. His wife, Nell, was out with the kids for a weekend outing, leaving the house eerily quiet. He headed to the bedroom, his head still pounding, but his attention was drawn to an unfamiliar sight, a small, ornate box on the dresser, something Nell had never mentioned before. Curiosity got the better of him, and as he opened the box, he found a collection of items that didn't belong to him. A delicate bracelet with an inscription, a faded photograph of Nell with another man, and a stack of handwritten notes, their content too intimate and personal for his peace of mind. The discovery hit Ron like a punch to the gut. His hands shook as he sifted through the evidence, each item unraveling the fabric of his trust. The bracelet glinted accusingly in the dim light, the photograph a stark reminder of a world he hadn't been a part of. His mind raced, each thought more chaotic than the last, as he tried to piece together what these findings meant. Was it possible that Nell had been unfaithful? The thought gnawed at him, leaving him grappling with a storm of emotions, anger, confusion, and an overwhelming sense of betrayal. Ron's heart hammered as he waited for Nell to return home. The house felt cold and foreign, its familiar warmth now overshadowed by the chilling revelation he'd uncovered. When Nell finally walked through the door, her smile faded instantly as she saw Ron's expression a mixture of hurt and determination that spoke volumes. Ron, you're home early, she said, her voice light, but it faltered as she took in his demeanor. Yeah, I'm home, he replied, his voice tight. We need to talk. Nell's face paled as Ron gestured toward the bedroom. The tension was palpable as she followed him, the silence between them heavy with unspoken fears. As they entered the room, Ron picked up the ornate box and held it out to her. "'What's this, Nell?' he asked, his voice trembling despite his attempt to stay composed. Nell's eyes widened as she took in the items laid bare before her. For a moment she was silent, her gaze shifting from the bracelet to the photograph and then back to Ron's pained eyes. "'I... 
I didn't mean for you to find those, she stammered. They're... they're from a time before we were together. Before we were together? Ron's voice cracked. Nell, these notes are recent. And this bracelet... whose is it? Tears welled in Nell's eyes as she struggled for words. Ron, I made mistakes, but it's not what it looks like. I... I was lonely, and I didn't know how to talk to you about it. The man in the photograph. He's someone from my past. It meant nothing, and the notes, they're from when I was trying to figure things out. Ron's heart sank as he listened, his mind racing to process her words. So, you were seeing someone else while we were together? No, Nell rushed to say. Not while we were together. But after things started to fall apart, I... Fall apart? Ron interrupted, his voice rising. You mean after you stopped trying? Nell's shoulders slumped, and she looked away, her voice barely a whisper. I didn't know how to fix it, Ron. I was scared. I didn't want to lose you. The raw pain in Ron's eyes was matched only by the anguish in Nell's. The weight of the betrayal hung heavily between them and Ron felt as though the foundation of his entire life was crumbling. I don't know if I can ever trust you again, Nell. This is more than just a mistake. It's a breach of everything we built. Nell's sobs filled the room as Ron turned away, his heart breaking at the sight of her grief, but feeling a cold resolve growing within him. The conversation had laid bare the painful truth, and Ron knew that nothing would ever be the same. The days following the confrontation were a whirlwind of cold, clinical decisions and emotional turmoil. Ron's heart felt heavy as he made the necessary arrangements to face the reality of his fractured marriage. He started by meeting with a divorce lawyer, a stern woman with sharp eyes who listened intently as Ron recounted his story. Her office was filled with stacks of legal books and framed certificates, a stark contrast to the personal chaos that was unfolding in his life. I'm sorry you're going through this, she said after Ron finished explaining. But it's important to understand your rights and options. We'll need to address division of assets, custody arrangements if applicable, and ensure that your interests are protected throughout this process. Ron nodded, feeling detached from the practicalities of it all. The legal jargon seemed distant compared to the emotional wreckage he was navigating. The lawyer's words were a necessary anchor in the storm helping him chart a course through the murky waters of his impending divorce. With the legal side of things set in motion, Ron turned his attention to his family. It was a conversation he dreaded more than any other. He knew that breaking the news to his children would be the hardest part, but he couldn't avoid it any longer. Sitting at the dinner table, where laughter had once filled the air, Ron gathered his family for an impromptu meeting. Nell sat beside him, her face a mask of resignation and sadness. Jake and Emily looked between their parents, sensing the gravity of the situation. Ron took a deep breath, his voice faltering as he began. There's something we need to talk about, something important. Your mother and I, we're going through some changes. We've decided to separate. The words hung in the air, heavy and final. Jake's eyes widened with confusion and Emily's lip trembled as she struggled to grasp the enormity of what her father was saying. Nell reached out to hold their hands, but Ron could see the depth of the emotional rift now laid bare between them. It's not your fault, Ron continued, his voice cracking. Your mother and I have tried to work through our problems, but we've come to a point where we believe this is the best decision for everyone. We're both going to be here for you, and we're going to get through this together. The room was filled with a tense silence, punctuated only by the quiet sobs of his children and the strained comfort of Nell's attempts to explain. Ron's heart ached as he saw the impact of his decision reflected in their faces, but he knew he couldn't turn back now. In the days that followed, Ron worked through the practicalities of moving forward, packing up his belongings, making arrangements for the separation, and starting to contemplate what life would be like on his own. The finality of his choices weighed heavily on him, but amidst the turmoil, he found a glimmer of resolve. He was preparing for a future that was uncertain, but promised a chance for renewal. 
The morning Ron had chosen for his departure was gray and drizzly, the sky a blanket of low-hanging clouds that mirrored his somber mood. He had spent the last few days packing up the essentials, the house now a maze of boxes and remnants of a life that was slowly being dismantled. Each item he packed seemed to hold a memory, a fragment of the past that was slipping away with each passing hour. Nell stood in the doorway of their bedroom, her eyes red and swollen from the nights of sleepless tears. Ron's gaze was resolute as he finished loading the last of his belongings into his old pickup truck, the engine rumbling softly as if it too was reluctant to leave. The house, once filled with warmth and the hum of daily life, now felt cold and distant. Ron turned to Nell, who had followed him outside, her face a mask of strained composure. Nell, this is it, he said quietly, trying to keep his voice steady. I've made my decision. I'm leaving for the Gulf Coast today. Nell's voice broke as she spoke, a mixture of resignation and pleading. Ron, please don't go. I know things are difficult now, but there's still time to fix this. We can work through our problems together. Can't we at least try? Ron shook his head, his heart heavy with the weight of his choice. I've thought about this for a long time, Nell. I need to move forward for my own sake. Staying here, trying to patch things up, it's not what I need right now. I need to find a place where I can heal and start fresh. Nell's shoulders slumped, and she took a hesitant step closer to him, her voice trembling. What about the kids? They're going to need you. I know, Ron replied, his voice softening with a touch of regret. And I'll always be there for them, but they need stability now, and I can't provide that while I'm struggling with my own issues. I hope you understand that this is what's best for everyone in the long run. The rain began to fall harder, a steady drizzle that seemed to underscore the gravity of the moment. Ron glanced back at the house, taking one last look at the life he was leaving behind. His heart ached, but his resolve remained unshaken. He reached out to touch Nell's arm gently, a final gesture of connection before he turned away. I wish things could have been different, Ron said quietly. I hope you find peace and happiness. I really do. Nell nodded, tears streaming down her face. Goodbye, Ron. With that, Ron climbed into his truck, the engine roaring to life as he pulled away from the house. The road stretched out before him, winding toward the Gulf Coast and the new beginnings that awaited. As the familiar sights of his old life faded into the distance, Ron felt a mix of sadness and anticipation. He was leaving behind everything he once knew, stepping into an uncertain future. But for the first time in a long while, he felt a glimmer of hope. The journey ahead would be challenging but it was a path he had chosen for himself, a path toward a new chapter in his life. Ron's arrival at the Gulf Coast was met with a mixture of relief and trepidation. The warm, salty breeze was a stark contrast to the icy winds he'd left behind, and the sound of waves crashing against the shore brought a soothing rhythm to his new, uncertain life. He settled into a modest, weathered beach house, its creaky floors and sea-worn charm offering a comforting simplicity. The house, though small, felt like a blank canvas, ready for him to paint a new chapter. His days were filled with the satisfying work of carpentry, each project a reminder of his skill and resilience. The locals were friendly, their easygoing demeanor a stark contrast to the tense atmosphere he had left behind. He found solace in the steady rhythm of his work, the steady hum of the saw, the satisfying thud of the hammer each sound a small affirmation of his decision. Yet amidst the sun-soaked days and the steady progress of his work, Ron often found himself lost in thought. The memories of Nell, Jake, and Emily lingered like shadows at the edge of his mind. He missed the laughter and the everyday moments of family life, though he knew he couldn't go back. He often walked along the beach at sunset, the expansive horizon a metaphor for his new beginning and the endless possibilities that lay ahead. In the quiet moments of reflection, Ron grappled with a complex mix of emotions. He wondered how Nell and the kids were coping, whether they had managed to find a new normal. He hoped they were finding their way, 
even as he struggled to forge his own path. There was a part of him that regretted the pain his departure had caused, but he also knew that staying would have meant prolonging his own suffering. The Gulf Coast, with its tranquil beauty and slower pace, offered Ron a sense of peace he hadn't known in years. He found a rhythm in his new life, the work fulfilling and the community welcoming. It wasn't perfect, and there were days when the loneliness crept in, but each day also brought a sense of progress and renewal. As the months passed, Ron began to embrace the new possibilities before him. He found comfort in the small victories, finishing a project, making a new friend, feeling the warmth of the sun on his face. He continued to build his new life, one day at a time, with the hope that this new beginning would lead him to a place of greater clarity and fulfillment. The Gulf Coast had become a place of healing and self-discovery, a sanctuary where Ron could rebuild his life on his own terms. The journey ahead remained uncertain, but for now he felt a cautious optimism that with time he would find peace and perhaps even a new sense of purpose. The aftermath of Ron's departure unfolded with a mixture of sorrow and slow, tentative recovery for those he left behind. Nell, faced with the sudden shift in her life, found herself navigating the tumultuous waters of single parenthood and emotional recovery. The children, Jake and Emily, struggled with the absence of their father and the changes in their daily routine. Their initial confusion and sadness gave way to a cautious adaptation, as Nell worked hard to create a stable environment for them amidst the upheaval. Nell's journey was marked by a period of intense self-reflection and adjustment. The end of her marriage forced her to confront her own choices and the impact they had on her family. She sought counseling and support from friends and family, striving to understand the dynamics that led to the breakdown of her relationship with Ron. Through these efforts, Nell began to rebuild her life, focusing on her children and her own personal growth. Over time, she found a semblance of stability and peace, though the scars of the past lingered, shaping her future decisions and relationships. Jake and Emily, though deeply affected by the separation, gradually adjusted to their new reality. They missed their father but found comfort in their mother's unwavering support. Nell worked hard to provide them with consistency and love, and the children began to find their footing in their new circumstances. School, friends, and extracurricular activities became anchors for them, offering normalcy and a sense of continuity despite the changes at home. For Ron, the Gulf Coast became a place of both healing and reflection. The tranquility of his new surroundings offered a stark contrast to the emotional storm he had left behind. Each day as he worked on new projects and integrated into the local community, he found moments of solace and self-discovery. The steady rhythm of his carpentry work provided a grounding force, allowing him to process his past and envision a different future. As he reflected on his choices, Ron grappled with a mix of regret and acceptance. He often thought about Nell and the children, wondering how they were coping and hoping they had found a measure of happiness. The pain of leaving them behind was a constant reminder of the difficult decisions he had made, but he also recognized that his departure was necessary for his own well-being. It was a painful but crucial step toward rebuilding his life on his own terms. The new life Ron was building was not without its challenges. The loneliness of his solitary existence was sometimes overwhelming, and there were days when the memories of his past life intruded on his sense of peace. Yet, there was a growing sense of contentment in the simple pleasures of his new environment. The sound of the ocean, the satisfaction of a completed project, and the gradual formation of new friendships. Ultimately, Ron's reflections brought him a sense of bittersweet clarity. He understood that while his departure had caused significant pain, it had also allowed him the opportunity to seek a life that aligned with his own needs and desires. The Gulf Coast, with its beauty and serenity, symbolized a new beginning for Ron, one where he could continue to heal and forge a future that, while different from what he had envisioned, held the promise of personal growth and renewal 